Carrie, I am so excited to have you here with Voices of Stack. I have been eagerly awaiting my interview with you. So you wanted to learn how to code. You want to transition into web development. What compelled you to choose web development? So I had actually, um, in the, like straight out of high school, I actually went and I worked very hard to get into a computer science program. Um, and I got accepted and life kind of just happened. And Mm -hmm. two months later I was removed from the program. I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore because I actually um, had a daughter, Mm -hmm. um, and all kinds of things happened. So, um, I just kind of, I went away from it and, um, fast forward like 20 years later, 20, 23 years later, 24 years later, um, while I was bartending, I bartended for 15 years. I decided that I did want to definitely have a plan B because one day bartending wouldn't be sustainable. And eventually I would really get tired of people <laughs> in that aspect, in that whole arena. Eventually I've I've seen like the, you know, the very bitter, salty, older bartenders that just want nothing to do with anybody. And I didn't want to do that. And then I got thinking about it and I was like, you know, I think I always say that I have an idea for an app always. And I'm always asking, why don't I know anybody that can write apps? (laughs) So I just kind of said, you know what? Why don't I be that one that knows how to write apps? Why can't I do it? I I love it. it. I love it. (laughs) So let's go for it. Why not? So that's kind that. of, um, yeah. And uh, I wanted to do it through, um, an, uh, you know, a program that was at least known and through an accredited college so that mm-hmm. it wasn't just some, hey, look, I got this from nobody knows my name boot camp. <laughs> you know, like, look at me go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that um, it was something accredited and that would be very noticed if I was going to go ahead and make that leap. So let me ask you this. So you have, you know, you, you made the transition, you decided, Mm -hmm. you know, 20 years later, you're like, I want to, I want to pick this back up again, but I know it wasn't easy. In fact, I I know so many people who've done this transition and it's hard. This is not an easy thing to learn. What was the hardest thing for you about learning? So the hardest part would be I, I did go away from computers and the most exposure that I had to them was using my Android phone. Um, I didn't even have a laptop mm-hmm. at all. And I didn't use one. Um, I lived in tropical places. I was at the beach all the time. I didn't do technology. I don't even mm-hmm. think I updated my, um, my phone. I think I was like four <laughs> updates off. behind, you know, You're like, like, oh, like, gosh, whatever operating I system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. It works. It's fine. Yeah. But, um, so I think that, you know, coming in as a like beginner and the last exposure that I had was like, I'm, I'm not going to go, go back to MS DOS or anything like that, but, um, you know, in that respect, I, I think maybe windows seven, I don't even know. Yeah. So, um, going ahead and you know a lot of the things that you know maybe younger people people or other people at least had some exposure to I was literally starting at ground zero and you know um having somebody that's you know teaching that's from the industry you know sometimes the most obvious things aren't so obvious to people Mm -hmm. and so rather than in the very beginning looking foolish and asking questions, I would be like, okay, I'm going to remember that word. And I start looking it up. Like, what's that word? Mean? What's that word? Mean? What's that word? Mean? And, and I remember specifically, um, I want to say it was like, it was like the first week or the second week, maybe um, th- there was an instance where our instructor was naming a function and he named it backpack. Well, here I am thinking, it's some trendy name for a software or something like backpack, backpack. What does that mean? What does that mean? And so I'm looking <laughs> things up and there's like a small something to do with something in Europe that's backpack. And then, <laughs> uh, and I'm going through this whole thing and he's still explaining things that are going on. I'm like, I'll just watch a recording later. I really need to know what this backpack thing is. <laughs> so finally, I like, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm just going to ask the question. <laughs> and I asked the question. I'm like, I'm going to look foolish, but... I just don't know what it is. And I asked and he's like, 
it's a backpack, like a thing that you put on your back and carry like books in and stuff. So it was a random name and it had nothing to do with anything. But had I asked that question in the very beginning, because it's really not a stupid question if you don't no, know the answer, exactly. um, it would have made it so I would have actually heard the next 10 minutes of what he said <laughs> and not had to gone back into the recording and actually watch the video again to, under, to even understand the rest of the class at that point. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, at That's not at the time, obviously, but looking back at it, it's I'm like it was just a backpack. <laughs> You're like, if I had just asked, you know, exactly. and, and 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 not to be afraid of looking yep. foolish, or you know, any every question is a good question. I Absolutely. think that is such and, a great example. Yep. yep. Um, Never compare probably- your journey or your knowledge to anybody else's journey or knowledge that's sitting beside you, because for all you know they don't have any idea either yeah they're just better at faking it like you don't know that (laughs) that's true that's true it's like that duck analogy right it's like a duck on water looks really like calm but underneath like they're frantically yes absolutely yeah yeah absolutely i like that let's talk now about the professional acceleration part of the program so there's of course like the learning the technical stuff which is challenging on its own. And then there's a part that's professional acceleration or what we call the soft skills. Mm-hmm. Why was this an important part of the program to you? And what were your key learnings? And what would you tell people um, who are skeptical about needing it program? I feel first and foremost, the people that are skeptical about that, they have already pretended that they know everything and they've already lost. Yeah. Like you're already losing if you think you know it all. Yeah. And that's really a very big missed opportunity because I think about if you watch a movie, right? You know, the movie, you know, the outcome, you know, everything about the movie. Well, you don't know everything. You watch the movie and you pick up a little key piece here and a key piece there. They're like, Oh, I didn't even notice that the first time. Right. So if you think about it that way, all it can do is make you better. If you already think you know everything, then, I mean, maybe you're not open to getting better, but um, I would say for those that, that don't have the soft skills too, there's, there's so many people that have not been in corporate America. There's so many companies that really operate on a different scale, have a different culture, have so many things that are not alike. So even though you've maybe you've worked in one, you haven't worked in them all. So Mm -hmm. having a well-rounded you to bring out into the marketplace, I think is super important. And I don't think having more skills hurts anybody. I think it's incredibly, I think it's great. I I really enjoyed, um, and I did have a lot of the soft skills already, but I definitely picked up a few more pointers along the way. I love the analogy of watching a movie. It's Mm -hmm. one that everyone can relate to. It's like, there's no way every single person you know, a person can know every single thing that happened, right? Yeah. You watch a movie like, and you watch closely enough, there's always like new nuances. So I think the, that's the really sixth cool. sense with Bruce Willis, Ooh. remember that movie? Yes, yeah. You had to go back and like, oh my gosh, all the doors are red. <gasps> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's a that's- perfect that's a really great analogy that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now let's talk about, and you've actually already started to talk about it, but the job hunt process, you know, <laughs> it's a roller coaster, right? It's like, just Ooh, don't get off yeah. the roller coaster. Don't get off the roller coaster, even though you want to. So, what tips yeah. do you have to share with people who have learned coding that are looking for their first gig? Um, make <laughs> sure your resume is good. Um, Use words that in a way that, um, you know, a lot of things they go through a filter, they go through a scanner, you need to use buzzwords to go ahead and get you selected out of a group. Um, I honestly, I applied often. And Mm -hmm. if I would look, I would look through the job postings. And if there were, say there were 20 things that they wanted from you, if I had six of them, I applied because they are not necessarily requirements. They are wants. They are not needs. They are wants. And let's be realistic here. Most of the stuff that they want, most people, especially for an entry-level position, they're not going to get. So you might be the most viable candidate um, or the only one that would apply for that position um, with that list of demands. So 
don't be intimidated um, by any of that. Um, I would say do practice interviews with your friends. Mm -hmm. um, get comfortable talking about why you enjoy um, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, connecting with people. I had a lot of places that I interviewed for that did not hire me, but they kept in touch with me and they um, loved my story and they, they would have other jobs that their friends knew about and they would refer me to them. So mm -hmm. just because you get a no the first time doesn't mean it's forever. Mm -hmm. So don't burn your bridges immediately. Keep your relationships open and mm -hmm. just be you and be honest and be, mm -hmm. be likable. Mm -hmm. And people will continue to want to help you through your journey or they'll give you feedback. They'll give you advice because mm -hmm. they like you and they want you to know how to, how to do, do things better or, or get to where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. I think that that's very important. So we're down to our last two questions. And these are the same two questions I ask everyone, regardless of what they've been trained on. What advice would you give your younger self? And you get to choose, you know, what version of your younger self, Carrie, that you would <laughs> be giving advice to. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I would say, yeah, I'm not one to say no to much, um, you know, but I will say if an opportunity presents itself, don't, Think of all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. Don't put roadblocks up in front of you. Go for it. Yeah. Why not? Um, don't yeah. be afraid. If it's something uncomfortable, if it's something foreign, if it's something completely out of your realm of understanding, who cares? Who cares? Mm -hmm. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way that you're going to go, what are you doing now? Are you, you know, like, do you yeah. not want to change what you're doing? There's yeah. no moving forward if you don't move forward. Yeah. And yeah. I think um, opportunities are, you're very fortunate when opportunities pre that present themselves. Don't just like toss them away like they're nothing. Yeah. I love that. I love seeing an opportunity and saying, why not? I think that's a really great default way to be. So our last question, Carrie, is, for someone who is at an inflection point professionally, what advice do you have for them to navigate this inflection point successfully? Um, I think that it's important to get serious about it and have a conversation with yourself. Like, what, what do you want? You are going to make a big change. Don't do it like halfway. What do you want? and be very clear with yourself. Um, you can even be slightly unrealistic because you'd be surprised how not unrealistic it could actually be. Um, and I feel like I'm a big believer in you know manifesting universal nine yards. Um, some people think that stuff's for the birds, but I, I truly do. And um, I think that just by saying it out loud or, or bringing it to a piece of paper or, mm -hmm just giving it attention, it makes it so that you've put it out there to become potentially true. Mm -hmm. And it just depends on how much you're willing to put into it and how, you know, you really are ready for something else. It's all determined by your motivation. And mm -hmm. I, I just really think that the more you just writing it down, mm -hmm. writing it down gives it you know, when you make a to-do list, you do it, right? Yeah. You write down a to-do list, you do it. So write down what you want and mm -hmm. then start figuring out these things that I want. What kind of career fits this? Mm -hmm. That That's like your job. Um, like, like, you know, um, what am I trying to say? Like, like your job posting or whatnot, yeah, like your personal mm -hmm. job posting. That's right. You know, like I want this, I want this, I want that. That's your list of demands for your new employer. Yeah. So it's a reverse job posting pretty much, I guess is what I was trying to say. I love but that. yeah, yeah. And I think that that's the first step. You and know, I think get very powerful. serious and deliberate. I was going to say, it's very powerful putting pen to paper. It's true. People mm -hmm. say that like, you know, very different from typing, like actually, you know, going old school and using a pen or pencil and putting it on paper um, really does help you process it and gives it weight and significance. Um, yeah. And as you said, you have to really 
sit down and say, am I ready to do this? Yeah. Um, and, and, and manifest it. I think that that is wonderful advice because these inflection points are not, there are smaller inflection points that people have, but this is a big one. You know, when you're yeah. changing careers, when you have to learn a new skill, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. it's, it's a really big, it's a really big change. And so it really requires, um, a shift in your mindset, um, yes. which is really what you're advocating for. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to know, just know it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. <laughs> Carrie, you have been so inspirational, your story, um, profound, your tips, um, so tactical and practical, um, that I know that people listening are going to be able to implement right away. So thank you so much um, for your time. It was good to see you. You, I know this is going to be so powerful for the stat community and it's going to be so powerful um, for the people to come um, in the stat community. So I really appreciate it. That makes me really happy. So I appreciate (laughs) you and I appreciate you even asking me to do this. So thank you. (laughs) I knew you'd be great with your story. (laughs) 